welcome to this very important session that we are going to run today for all our attendees who are here from all around the world. Welcome to this very important session, getting ready to restart in the new normal. I would like to welcome our panelists today, Mr. Bala Subramanyam S. Pillai, ED and CEO of IMTMA and BIEC, is also the president of IEIA. Ms. Sonia Parashar, the managing director and member of board, Noonberg Messe. Mr. Amresh Tiwari, vice chairman, India Convention Promotion Bureau. Mr. Bereslav Sizmek, CEO of CBBS Group. Mr. Vivek Shukla, director, affairs exhibitions. And Mr. Sakhin Chin, assistant chief executive, Sentosa Development Corporation, Singapore. With this, I would like to invite Mr. Bala Subramanyam to please share his insights about how these times have been for the industry as a president of IEIA. What does he feel the industry has faced and gone through during these last six months? I would like to start with Mr. Bala Subramanyam to please open up the session. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And uh, good morning, Raghav. And congratulations for this wonderful initiatives which is well-timed to be at now when the industry is, we are all waiting for the industry to open up. I appreciate the energy and the you know, motivation that you did at the right at the beginning. And let me start with once again with uh, thanking everybody in the panel and uh, uh, good morning once again. Glad to meet everybody digitally and virtually. Okay, COVID pandemic has uh, overshadowed um, the mice industry and the exhibition industry. Like everybody, it, it has affected India also badly. Needless to say that we are also facing the most challenging times, which are affected every spectrum of the organizations, be it small or large, and every communities in the sector. And the most distressing sector uh, are being the temporary ground workers, ground workers from the industry who have lost, lost the livelihood. Until last year, our exhibition has been growing pretty well with, uh, with uh, the rate of 10% year on year. And suddenly we are hit by this COVID and put us all in this unprecedented situation and has shut the exhibitions industry since March 2020. Overall, there has been a 20, 200 shows which has been cancelled and some of them are postponed due to this pandemic. Some of the venues in India, the large venues from different regions have been converted into the COVID care centers and we are anxiously waiting that these venues will be available soon to host exhibitions and we start with our face-to-face -face exhibitions at the earliest. In terms of uh, business effects, approximately rupees 3 lakh crores of businesses have been affected. It generally happens during exhibitions, face-to-face -face exhibitions in India. Since there were no exhibitions from, until, from March, and an estimated 15 lakh livelihood have been affected. And the most distressing are the temporary ground workers, which I just mentioned, who have lost the livelihood during this last five to six months. Uh, in a business, definitely are, are a springboard for the industry and it enables faster recovery for trades and to come back to normalcy. We expect this uncertainty to clear as we are able to see some positive signs of the, uh, in, in the economy with some of the sectors uh, getting unlocked and which would provide opportunity for the industry to come back quickly and industry can start uh, functioning normally. And uh, of course, during the time, since the time the lockdown was there, IEA has been proactively doing various initiatives with the help of the executive members and the membership and the secretariat. Like we have done a series of webinars and masterclasses as part of membership engagement uh, and knowledge sharing. Uh, we had uh, 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 we, we had a lot of interactions with the government officials. We have made several representations as part of our advocacy initiatives, starting with relief measures to stimulus measures to of the current, current request to restart exhibitions, which has been a main focus in the last few weeks. Last few weeks, we have made concentrated effort, uh, very much in the social media, by also releasing a lot of press releases in the last few days, highlighting the challenges that the exhibition industry have been facing and the dire need for the exhibition to restart soon. As we all know, the exhibitions play a very important role for the entire spectrum of industries, and MSME in India has been badly affected as they are solely dependent on exhibition as one of those promotional media campaigns, you know. And to highlight this, we had a productive interactions with the Honorable Minister of MSME, Nitin Nitkariji, and he has been very positive in terms of extending all the support whenever the, um, um, when, whenever the exhibition is going to be, you know, unlocked. And some of the suggestions that we had uh, put on to him has been very proactively accepted, and we hope to have a very good you know, interactions with him. 
the other important sector, mice is, in, mice is definitely a feeder market for the tourism the hospitality segment and the exhibition support, the whole uh, uh, travel segment, the value chains very uh, exhaustively. And we play a very important role in stimulating the tourism and the hospitality industry in India. In that aspect, we had we were in IEA was in uh, were uh, invited by the tourism minister recently for having an interaction to understand what are the challenges faced. Probably that we could have a on the ground uh, challenge that we have faced, so that probably we could take some input from us whenever there's going to be a guidelines launched for exhibition really starting and along with the mice industry. We had also had virtual meetings with some of the senior officials in the Department of Commerce and the uh, and also with along with the ITPO, which is a nodal agency. Um, in India. Uh, we had a focus meeting with the leading sectorial associations uh, who are also predominantly very first focus on exhibition as one of the revenue uh, in the sectors along with the venue owners and also the memberships and we have been actively supporting and all the uh, stakeholders have been actively supporting in all the uh, initiatives that we have launched since March 2020 and we, I, take the, I wish to take this opportunity to thank them all for backing us up. Uh, also, when there was the lockdown got ended and there was a series of unlock which was started, we were ready with our standard operating procedure in terms of safety protocols, which we had done it very exhaustively with the help of the membership. And we also worked closely with IDPO in doing, drafting the SOP. And this SOP has been already been probably submitted to the government and currently with the Ministry of Home Affairs, which could be considered uh, whenever there's going to be an announce, announcement of the unlock 4.0 and we expect exhibition to be a part of this guidelines uh, soon. Uh, that's it from my end, uh, Rago. Probably I can take up questions whenever they are posted. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Bala. Those were great opening remarks and a quick overview of the exhibition industry in India. With this, I would like to move to Mr. Amresh Tiwari, who is representing the Indian Convention Promotion Bureau. And so, hi. So, uh, thank you, Raghav. So, as we all know, ki the mice industry is around $700 billion industry globally. And it was expected in 2019 that it will grow five times more in the next five years. And definitely after the COVID, lots of impact happened on the physical events, uh, all part of mice, be it a meeting, incentive, conference, and exhibition. So, in all segment of mice has got disturbed. And the last five months was very bad for the industry. We at a ICPB always try to revive, have the various, you know, the interaction with the Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Tourism, MEA, MHA, to open it up. Initially, the, you know, uh, government has a 50 people uh, restrictions, especially on the social events. Then we had taken up this cause, we should have the opening. So government first ask us the numbers which we had given them are uh, three numbers that is uh, inside the 300 people out with the outdoor space 500 and 1000 but then we you know come to the formula where 50 percent of the capacity uh, so you know it should be given the permission for based on the 50 percent of capacity of the space because there was some confusion with the numbers earlier they asked the numbers then we come to the formula with the space and i'm happy to share that government at the very highest level is considering and very soon we are very confident that we will get this 50% uh, of capital utilization and most likely as soon as in you know maybe early late September we'll have this uh, starting. I given them the date 1st October to, uh, to open with and they asked the two dates of so 1st October and 1st November keeping the COVID in my mind. Remember, it's not a destination. MICE is all about entire city-wise destination, state-wise destination. So we have to look the entire country together. So hopefully government will do that. Other than that, what the best thing happened, ki we had rolled the government, you know, so the NTP, that is National Tourism Policy, which government is framing. So MICE is playing a key role for a growth of any country. So we rolled key MICE area should be included. So what we did ki other than the traditional mice that is a meeting incentive conference exhibition we asked to include uh, social events that is the wedding and all the other social events part of mice as well as the virtual events because nowadays lots of things happening in the virtual and that should also be part of mice we need to have a guidelines frame for this as well and uh, we are happy to say Aki, we, as i'm also director of the faith so we given the recommendation we combined all the industry recommendation and in, including the social and i'm happy to share the government almost considered the social event to be included in mice 
and icpb has been requested to frame a guideline for the wedding destination so that how to promote this what kind of incentives came to be launched i'll happy to have the views on those so that we can forward to the government on this other than that key to have a benefit we ask the we work out with the government under cssss scheme that is champion sector services scheme so which is exclusive for the mais where uh, if any international conference happening where the earlier it was benefit but based on the 500 people minimum conference and 10% so it's 500 has reduced to 250 and instead of one night benefits or two night benefits so if any event is happening in india 250 and more than that international event and 10% participant are the foreigners that is uh, international delegates so two nights gst the cgst will be refunded them back so this is a major victory which we already achieved uh, and that has been implemented the champion sector service scheme for the two night yeah, under the mst we are asking for all the night but two night has been already implemented a budget has been allocated for that as already in the similar way uh, the mda scheme which government has ki for bidding international conference a uh, winner will get a 500 uh, 500000 rupees and the first runner up and second runner up 250000 and 150000 rupees that has been also you know the lots of there was lacunas which were not getting so that has been sorted out and lots of member are applying and getting that so that's another big boost for the dmcs the pco the partners and third in india from the last uh, you know 75 years we do not have the pcos category which is ministry of tourism recognized category so all the pcos work either a tour operator or the dmc because are they are not coming from the recognized sector so some for times they don't get the benefits so we had taken up this matter with the government of india during this lockdown time uh, at a bureau level we had taken all the you know the inputs and draft the policy for the pco and have almost matlab it's on a very final stage of getting approval so hopefully soon we'll have a pco professional a category recognized by ministry of tourism that's another benchmark which we did and we launched with lots of universities almost close to 2000 students we engage as young leaders you know the budding leaders growing them in the mais so we taken lots of you know the uh, online courses for them and you know the update the knowledge there explain them what are the job opportunities at the same time keeping engaged the members members keeping is the government at the national tourism policy which is coming up so mais is going to be a major part so where we are looking mais not at a, a central level the destination by so city wise mais dmos the state wise the dmos in the developing the whole mais infrastructure plan even in the smart city plan mais should be part of the smart city plan so that the mais infrastructure can be developed plus uh, other thing has come up during this crisis time as you know all know when the crisis comes everybody hold together so best thing happened ki all the stakeholders my dear bala is here and other industry players we all come together so be developing the sops guideline i think everyone work hard very hard hard to get together all the inputs very freely the inputs has been shared discussed debated and come at as a single mais industry wise i think that's a very positive signal given by the given to the government and all the stakeholders now i'd like to move to mr uh, sakhen chen and i'd like to ask mr Sa uh, sakhen about uh, the latest developments in in his premier resort we all know sentosa is one of its kind uh, island resort in singapore and uh, well uh, mr tiwari talked about connecting the dots like weddings and so i think uh, mice is a, is a growing segment for us in sentosa certainly a very important uh, segment for so singapore last year before covid uh, hit us we had 30 mid sized groups that have come to sentosa to have their mice events uh, i think what we want to do is really to uh, to look forward we think in this new environment uh, we need to keep an open mind we will uh, start cautiously be agile we need to adapt and change along the way explore new solutions and then gradually push the envelope you know while we take guidance from uh, national health advisories so that we can enhance my experience you know inclu including planning for new uh, formats i think uh, for us in our planning you know in our considerations i think first and foremost is everyone's uh, health and uh, safety right this uh, both the population our guests our staff 
And uh, we would like everyone to come to Sentosa for your events and for your leisure with peace of mind. So we have taken a very phased approach uh, in, in Singapore and certainly uh, in, in Sentosa in the reopening of the economy and uh, resumption of uh, activities. We have adopted stringent safe management measures. We have enforcement regimes to, uh, to lower the risk of transmission. And this includes mandatory wearing of mask, social distancing, contact tracing, and capacity control, like limits on group sizes that we have rolled out across uh, our offerings in F&B and uh, attractions. I think this helps us keep uh, community transmission to a low in Singapore, and this puts us in a safe uh, and strong position to ensure guest, guest safety and peace of mind. And this will allow us to gradually relax some of the restriction. So right now, events will follow a hybrid model with a mix of face-to-face, -face, and we are ready for this, right? Face-to-face -face, uh, interactions and virtual interactions. These hybrid events can take place in a, in a couple of ways. We can have multiple physical events linked together virtually. We can have one physical event with the rest uh, connected uh, virtually. And we will have uh, some cohorting of groups. We will need to keep uh, group, sm group sizes small, but in maybe slightly different rooms where we can link things together uh, digitally. And uh, we certainly have, can also do virtual events, uh, as uh, my colleague earlier has mentioned. Right? We can do a fully virtual event, and that can link us uh, internationally to a, even a wider audience. So what we are really doing in, uh, in kind of uh, preparing and opening up for, for MICE events is to leverage on what we have already done uh, in Singapore at a community level, right? So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We will learn from uh, you know, the local experience that we have in uh, opening up for holiday makers so that they can, as they come back to enjoy you know, the attractions, our beach dining and uh, staycation on Sentosa. So what we have done and uh, kind of experimented through cohorting of groups, through uh, prevention of intermingling, through keeping group sizes small, ensuring people continue to wear masks when they are not uh, eating or drinking. Right? So we will roll some of this experiment with some of these things out and, uh, and roll it out uh, gradually. I think we, we, one example I can give would be even the tour bus, the Sentosa Island bus tour, which is a regular feature on incentive tours for groups that uh, they come to, 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 to Sentosa. We have adapted that. We can continue to run that, provided we have safe distance on the bus, right? One meter spacing, make sure everyone wear, wear their mask. So really our goal here would be to make the MICE experience as enriching as ever, but doing so in a very safe manner. Wonderful. Uh, well, Singapore has been on the leading front in this battle against COVID and the way it has handled is kind of a reflection for the rest of us to follow. Well, thank you for giving us a very important update. And uh, we also have with us Mr. Rod Kamleshwaran, and uh, he is a, a well-known expert for the mice industry. I would like to ask him what, are, what, what is his take in case he can give us some interesting insights from the world of mice from all across the globe. A quick update from Mr. Rod Kamleshwaran will be much appreciated by all of our attendees. I'm very thank you, Raghav. I'm very mindful that this um, event's got a very wide range audience. Um, so I guess um, the implications of how the new normal evolves uh, will really vary uh, by segment and you know by location and, and the pace of that. You know whether you're an organizer or a venue or whether you're in India or in France, um, how it looks will vary. Obviously, there's going to be a common theme. So keeping that in mind, I'd like to share three key points um, uh, of the new normal uh, from a venue operations perspective. Um, next gen mice venues, there's obviously going to be implications uh, on existing venues and the design uh, of future venues. Um, one of the things that 
uh, taking most of the airwaves at the moment is that digital space. Clearly, there's going to be digital enhancement, both from a hardware perspective and software perspective. And there's going to be uh, elements of soft reskilling, staff reskilling, and so on. I'm going to come back to these in a little bit more detail. But I do want to point out that uh, in our view, this new normal is not going to be linear. It, it'll be in phases. It'll be in at least two phases uh, because there isn't um, a straight line when the COVID shadow disappears and we move to that new normal. So, so, so very clearly they, they, there's going to be that period where, uh, mind you, the period we're in right now, where it's much more volatile, it's much more uncertain, um, whilst we wait for either vaccine or treatment. Uh, so obviously there's a lot of hesitance on the part of uh, both governments, uh, which is putting some regulatory hurdles. And of course, there's a lot of hesitance on the part of organizers uh, and the customers as well. So in that period, um, as, uh, as we've heard from uh, uh, the um, uh, journey that Centos has already uh, begun, um, some venues are sitting and still waiting, largely because they're being constrained by government, but a lot of venues are moving forward. But of course, that's, in a, that's an environment where there's a higher focus on hygiene, social distancing, um, track and trace, crowd limits. You know, th there's a high level of virtual event appeal and domestic focus and so on. Some of these, of course, we expect will fade to an extent as the COVID shadow fades. It, it doesn't mean, you know, we will no longer going to be interested in hygiene and crowd management, but the level of heightened focus that's there at the moment and, and probably going to remain in this next phase, which is, which is probably, you know, a, a good 12 to 18 months or potentially even two years, depending on when we reach, reach uh, effective va uh, vaccination or at least widespread success in uh, vaccination or treatment. So we, we expect that um, th there's going to be implications uh, on the building that's going to be more than just uh, addressing these operational uh, matters. Some venues have the level of flexibility uh, and uh, the luxury of being able to handle a lot of these uh, additional um, regulatory uh, requirements that have been imposed on us. Uh, they also have... Um, um, uh, uh, either operationally or in the supply chain, uh, an element of support. But a lot of venues are going to consider retrofitting some changes to add that flexibility. So when we're talking about having things like um, uh, virtual uh, options or hybrid options uh, in, in, this, uh, in this transitionary phase, it might mean you can't put everyone in that room where you're trying to broadcast. It means you might need a second room where you've got the production crew or the tech crew. You know, so you need flexibility for the two rooms to be able to work together, uh, you know, to have the elements of communications happening. So there's, there's going to be, that's just one example, but there's certainly going to be some elements of retrofitting that'll be required in the buildings, whether it's related to technology or it's, it's related to simple things that's able to address uh, the, the crowd bottlenecks uh, or, um, uh, social distancing and other things. In, in, in this very hyped up space of digital uh, enhancements, um, I, I look, I want to compliment um, uh, what my colleague from Centosa said, that this is, this is not something that's replacing uh, the very powerful physical events. Uh, it's, it's going to complement, and it is already doing that, it's, it's complementing it. Yes, absolutely. There's a heightened attraction for virtual events at the moment. Uh, some of it is driven by the uh, uh, regulatory <laughs> restrictions that's been uh, imposed on us. But in future, we expect that the vast majority of the, these events that have shifted to virtual will return to the, the, the powerful physical in-person type events, albeit we expect a lot of them will have a virtual component and therefore is going to be hybrid. But technology is going to be uh, influencing the customer journey beyond 
just this virtual event space that we're talking a, a lot about. Technology is going to uh, influence the entire journey from um, selling and marketing uh, to uh, obviously um, uh, event management and beyond. There's going to be uh, elements of uh, remote selling. There's going to virtual venue tours. All of this exists at some stage with different venues, but it's, it's going to become a lot more common. Um, uh, beyond event uh, solutions, there's going to be a high appeal, we expect, for live analytics, uh, because this isn't just going to be uh, giving more insights on uh, the, the uh, delegate movements and so on. But during this transitionary phase, these sort of things also help in crowd management and in, 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 in helping identifying not just the sweet spots in exhibitions, uh, but also identifying the potential bottlenecks and, and um, uh, self, uh, what do you call, um, self-isolation breaches that, that might occur. Similarly, in terms of staff reskilling, we think this is going to be across the value chain because um, if uh, venues are going to get more involved in virtual selling, remote selling, they're going to need staff who need slightly different skills than salespeople who do face-to-face -face sales. They, you know, when you start selling virtually, uh, mind you, the virtual components are going to complement, of course, uh, the inherent face-to-face -face that, that we expect would still exist but it's going to require slightly different skill sets. And obviously, if we're talking about some level of prevalence of hybrid events, that'll mean that there's a need for technical crew on site. And often, as we know, virtual events can't be done purely driven by software to get the quality events that customers are going to uh, desire, especially for multi-day events that's over extended periods, uh, they need something that's akin to uh, a TV production, which means, uh, as we're seeing in um, Marina Bay Sands, Sydney, uh, you know, a lot of venues that are uh, announcing the launch of uh, virtual event studios, which are essentially broadcast studios. Uh, so that'll mean th th there's a different skill set of staff that's required as well. So uh, uh, I just want to echo again, this doesn't mean this is what's going to happen in every single venue, every single market, but we expect there's going to be some level of this uh, that's going to start uh, uh, becoming an expectation from the customers, uh, which uh, uh, raises the question around how long uh, uh, do venues and destinations wait before starting to move towards this curve or what is uh, inherently already in play, the shift to the digital space uh, in particular, I guess. So at what stage do they start reskilling uh, their staff and uh, doing these hardware sort of uh, enhancements? Sure. Sure. Uh, thank you, Raghav. Thank you and much appreciated insights and a very diverse uh, viewpoint coming from you, much expected also. And uh, I think going forward, flexibility and uh, how we evolve is going to take uh, take us to the next level. With this, I'd like to move to Ms. Sonia Parasha, and uh, she's a known veteran in the industry, not just in India, but all across the globe. I'd like to ask Ms. Parasha, uh, these six, last six months have been a very difficult phase for uh, not just her, but for the entire industry. How has uh, she, as a leading exhibition organizer, uh, kept up uh, with the pace, inspired her team, engaged her clients, and what are her upcoming plans and her take on this situation that our industry is in? I would uh, actually first echo some of the comments which have been uh, made by uh, our uh, fellow panelists, uh, especially Mr. Sakhin Chin and Mr. Rod Kamleshwaran. Uh, I think it's, it's absolutely fantastic what he said in terms of uh, staff reskilling. I think that would be the need of the hour. So when I look at the last six months, what I have been doing in-house with my team members is actually staff reskilling because they, they needed a new set of skills. And that was absolutely pertinent that uh, for our future existence, that the new skill set of skills is added to the existing skills. And the competence which we had uh, in-house that had to be actually upscaled. So 
I would say that the new normal when will be actually not new normal. As um, um, Rod also said, that it won't be uh, uh, it won't be linear, so it won't be actually the new normal. So actually, the co the consequences of this particular disruptions uh, at this point of time are actually not discernible as yet. We may be seeing this short term disruption probably unlocking a long term widespread value creation. So retrofitting, upscaling, reskilling, um, um, and trust building. I think our customers and consumers will need a new level of trust from all of us, whether it is venue, whether it is exhibition organizers, whether it is um, mice, whether it is um, events, there is a new expectation of trust from our consumers. So we all have to work towards that new expectation as well. Uh, since multiple sectors have been actually eroded simultaneously uh, during this pandemic, including of course the exhibition industry and the event and mice industry, this may also require some countermeasures in social and economic policies all around as well. So uh, I personally see in the last six months also an inevitable filtering um, to a section of truly innovative and resilient businesses as well. I mean, we were, we were hoping that the situation would improve by the end of the year, but actually every three months we got into a new situation. And uh, if we did not innovate ourselves, um, brought some innovations in our existing businesses, I think uh, the, the core, um, um, the core uh, existence would be also challenged. So I think uh, we had to stand out, we had to pivot, and we had to also innovate. I mean, I wasn't a fan of virtual and digital exhibitions all my life, 25 years of being only doing physical life face to face because we are big fans because we always facilitated uh, this face to face contact because exhibitions were not just about putting up stalls and events were not just putting up uh, events but it was a chemistry between humans which we were creating. It was a business chemistry which we were creating. And uh, uh, of course, I mean, I am seeing some happy faces on the screen right now, but I still would love, love to meet them all in person. So I think that the physical events will never go away, but this hybrid model is there to stay. And uh, this retrofitting our business models, I think, that's been happening for decades. You know. There's no successful business model which stays forever for centuries and decades. So we all have to retrofit. So there has to be a disruption for us to be shaken up, to be innovating more. So um, um, Raga, what you asked, what I've been doing with my team is um, just um, uh, shaking them up more uh, beyond this pandemic. So ask them, listen, what do you do? To exist after six months, and I think uh, uh, they took it up as a challenge, and I think we all, as uh, fellow industrymen, also took it up as a challenge because we were not ready to just vanish from the scene. And uh, uh, I think uh, we will become more resilient, more innovative, and uh, I, I personally am looking forward to a new normal as well, or whatever you call it—a new normal, or a new life, or a new hybrid, retrofitted, upscaled, um, um, you know, more skilled uh, workforce, more skilled models. So I'm, I'm personally looking at it more positively at this point of time. Uh, yeah, that's what I have to say at the moment. I'll come back to you if you have any further questions. Thank you. Wow, that was that was amazingly well put, uh, Ms. Parasha. And uh, you kind of, uh, you know, I'll echo your viewpoints completely. And uh, you mentioned about being innovative and uh, evolving. Uh, uh, I'd like to move to Mr. Vivek Shukla, who is a leading name um, uh, for the education educational events. Uh, thank you, Mr. Raga, for uh, providing us this opportunity to interact with such eminent panelists, not only from India, but even from overseas. And this brings uh, the greatest, uh, you know, I think a knowledge sharing session for all of us to update ourselves 
and each uh, gentleman and um, Sonia, ma'am, uh, who's present here is contributing in the uh, best possible form. I think this is the greatest learning uh, opportunity for me as well. Well, first of all, thank you for all. Thanks, thanks to all of you. Uh, coming back to your questions, I think this is a greatest opportunity. You know, if you look at uh, post pandemic, because we have got uh, a good break in between to introspect, to restructure our business ideas, right? And maybe you know, this is uh, maybe we'll be able to figure out after a year or so that we will uh, it's it's going to be a like a, a, a blessing in disguise where you know new kind of model some variant which is uh, you know which is quite evident what all these speakers have also mentioned so i'm picking few points here uh, from uh, what uh, mr amresh mentioned about you know proposing to the to the various uh, administration and departments here of running the events in 50% capacity uh, so this is an important element which will and how the business uh, or the format of the exhibition is going to evolve further. So that means running in the scale of 50% downsizing in terms of footfall, whether it's a B2B event or a B2C events. So the whole model, then the focus will be much more on quality visitors. Now, in order to enhance that quality, so the whole objective of creating uh, this quality visitors, so that's an important element which every organizer has to consider this point. Again, he also, I appreciate the point which you mentioned, Mr. Amresh, uh, about including virtual event as well as the social event in this MICE uh, industry. This is something which is, which is very, very important and uh, congratulations to you for at least giving it a, a push. And if this get included, I think this is going to be a major contributor. Now, three uh, important uh, speakers, Mr. Chin, uh, Mr. Kamleshwaran and uh, Ms. Parashar. I think all three of you focused on very important point, uh, which was majorly the combination of virtual as well as uh, uh, the physical event through hybrid model. I think this is something which is which has become a uh, most essential part because technology has become an enabler and we cannot ignore it. Uh, now, if you look at our the opportunity, what we got in last three months, I think we were the first in our uh, segment in the education sector to launch the virtual exhibition. You see, we all of us are missing the physical events because we have been doing this physical events all throughout, you know, for our company, if you look at our company, it's 25 years. I think many veterans who are present here, they have been doing it for many, many years. So nothing is going to replace uh, the physical events, but I think the scenario has evolved very quickly due to this pandemic, where the online or the virtual element, it's, it's become a precursor, even a postcursor. So in between the physical event is there, but before and after, there's a beautiful combination which has worked out and it's going to be a different experience in terms of promoting the business idea of exhibitions and making it more valuable for the end consumer, whether it's a B2B clients or a B2C clients. So this is something which is very, very uh, important for all of us to understand. And I think most of the organizers have acknowledged this fact and have started working. So I'm sure this will give a tremendous drive uh, as you know, as affairs, you know, we have now created such models. Currently, we are working on virtual fairs. Our education events have become, an, you know, we, through this virtual interface, connecting with students, educators, academicians. Now, even the physical events going to start, we would like to continue the virtual event where there will be a beautiful combination where pre uh, using the online or the virtual event, we can get uh, create a very qualified lead or qualified visitors to our physical events, considering the norms or the SOP norms, which is laid by the government in order to have relevant crowd, which is downsizing in terms of numbers, but getting quality. So I think this is something, a great opportunity. The new sk skill sets, uh, which is required, which is mentioned by uh, Mr. Kamleshwaran, I think this is very, very important. I think that was further advocated by uh, Ms. Parashar. Uh, in terms of how the new skill set. So all these years, in, if you look at our company, there were so many back-to-back -back events. We were not figure, finding out enough time to train our people. I think when new skills, which, which is required, I think this is the time where we are still feeling, you know, we are going back to again, you know, 20 years back, 
the kind of rigor what all of us has done in terms of brushing our skills you know updating and upskilling ourselves this is such a wonderful opportunity which we have got uh, otherwise at least i know about our company would have never gone you know given so much of thrust in terms of upskilling ourselves or upskilling ourselves so this is a wonderful opportunity which at least uh, whenever i get a get to a chance to interact i don't curse this opportunity i don't curse this uh, challenging times that is a difficult times for all of us but i always look at you know the better side uh, this would be a, i'm sure a great blessing in disguise which we which all of us will certainly acknowledge whenever there's a next webinar next next year sometime during this time so we'll be able to in a you know better better position i think ms parasha mentioned very important point uh, which is little away from our discussion on the trust element you see it's very very important every venue provider every service provider role has become the most integral part because that's how the organizers like us will be able to put up a exhibition or an events considering the sop or norms laid by the government the trust element is why important why because it's not about just organizing the event the trust and conviction is required for a buyer for a b2 buyer to travel to different destination to come to a, a venue without any hesitation without any apprehension so maintaining the hygiene levels the the uh, the work what all venue providers are going to provide i think it's going to be very very essential so this is an important element and certainly uh, this is the time where i think uh, all of us are creating a new business model and this business model which all this most of you mention about you know putting making a combination or virtual events complementing the physical event this is going to be working very well in near future and i think with this idea we are moving ahead and i i see great amount of changes or the new formats of business the new revenue streams will be generated i think uh, by using uh, this prevailing times Well, thank you, Mr. Shukla, for uh, for a, a wonderful uh, uh, summary of various speakers and uh, also putting up your points, very very uh, valid points. Uh, I'd like to move move to a gentleman who is a leading consultant in the exhibition event mice industry, Mr. Barry Slav, and uh, uh, he is also involved in the exhibitions think tank. I'd like to ask his take about what is going to be the new normal going forward. Can he provide us some insights? Uh, thank you, Raga. Once again, uh, compliments for organizing. the whole event and uh, it's real pleasure to be here together with the uh, other esteemed uh, panelists and discussing the new normal in the exhibition event and mice industry um, so uh, definitely since the very beginning of the of the crisis especially i can uh, speak uh, about the global trends but uh, mostly maybe focused on europe so i'm 25 years with the industry i'm a ufi member i was also involved in this exhibition think tank discussions ufi webinars i think that it was uh, like some previous panelists said it was maybe the good uh, opportunity for the industry to rethink the 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 future uh, trends the future opportunities and try to embrace the digital and innovative way of, of communicating Uh, with the market so in the uh, exhibition industry especially inside the ufi there were uh, some studies done on the digital and uh, um, uh, online opportunities uh, but definitely uh, it was still unknown how the industry will monetize from this digital uh, innovations and i believe that uh, this maybe hesitation Uh, was uh, right now uh, pushed uh, forward because of the covid-19 crisis and then a lot of things which were put on hold will be definitely developed right now so there were i i believe a lot of good examples already uh, we experienced that the industry reacted very fast definitely the situation is very difficult so a lot of events were cancelled uh, the whole spring and summer season Uh, definitely uh, there are very few events maybe smaller events taking place uh, but right now as you know from uh, uh, september 1st germany is opening the market some other countries uh, uk is opening from uh, october 1st uh, a lot of events uh, is supposed to start in in autumn season so everybody is eager to see how that will function so how the industry will react and most uh, important is how the market will react so what uh, some of the previous speakers said i think that it's very important uh, to keep this level of um, 
uh, importance of our industry for recovery of economy. I think that this is the key element for the success of, of event industry. I believe that people understand and some previous speakers said that this uh, personal interaction is very important for the people because uh, definitely it's nice to be online, uh, it's nice to communicate, but if you really would like to enga be engaged to develop some business relations, you need some sort of uh, personal interaction. Um, so I'm working also with other industries. I'm working with, with tourism, hospitality. Um, we had some clients uh, uh, working on some deals on mergers acquisitions in energy sector from Turkey. Uh, but in spite of the problems of the traveling, these people find a way to, to come to Croatia, to meet the clients and talk personally because they said, so, okay, we can exchange some things online, we can have a Zoom conference, but it is still not good enough to make the, the serious step in our business relations. Um, so that's why I believe that uh, what was the outcome of uh, the think tanks and a lot of discussions in the industry, I believe that uh, uh, industry can recognize the new opportunities to embrace the digital. Um, my opinion is that this uh, model, uh, hybrid model, uh, so live events with one hybrid uh, uh, extension will be maybe the model which will be working very well in the, in the future. I'm not very optimistic uh, just about the virtual events. I believe that virtual events, you are speaking just about uh, the digital events, definitely can be some sort of compensation in this uh, very time. But uh, the future, uh, I think uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Vivek said also, is in a way to find a way how to monetize, how to uh, use three uh, 65 days interaction with the with the market and community. I believe that was one of the major um, uh, tasks uh, put in front of the exhibition industry. So how to keep the audience engaged through the whole year. So how to create the business platform which will be working very well, not only during the, the events. I believe that right now industry is facing this opportunity. I believe that industry is able to answer these questions and I'm positive that uh, the event industry will be successful in the future and will be one of the key keys uh, for the recovery of the economies uh, uh, across the globe. Thank you uh, Mr. Berisla for those words of positivity and optimism. It's a quick fire round and uh, I'd like to start with Mr. Bala Subramanian and uh, uh, Mr. Bala you, you have a state-of-the-art purpose-built venue, BIEC, the Bangalore Exhibition Center. Can you tell me, in order of preference, what are the key things which will be on top of your mind when we restart the new normal as a venue provider? I was just mentioning that without even blinking my eye, I would say the confidence-building measure to my stakeholders, the entire stakeholders, because as a venue, venue plays an important role in the entire value chain of exhibitions, and they play a very larger role in terms of the entire interest of the exhibition industry. So of our interest would be in terms of confidence building to the exhibition organizer who are our major customers and the visitors in terms of preparations, making it ready in terms of all aspects, in terms of safety, hygiene, and following of protocols is very, very, will be top of my mind. Uh, it's very, very important for us also while we honor a uh, venue friend that we work uh, definitely in terms of what are the safety protocols that we will be doing it whenever the exhibitions resumes, resumes in the venue and what are the uh, steps that you will take in terms of because traveling is going to be very important. A lot of things which we have to work very closely with the organizer right from the registrations to FNB to moving around the aisles. All these things has to come from the venue side. Of course, this has to be in terms of acceptance from the organizers also. So confidence building is something very, very important. Other things which you'll have to internally work on is basically how do we in terms of, um, you know, educate or probably bring in some kind of technology into the venue, which will definitely enable the organizer in working with very well, because the world is going toward contactless when we go for social, uh, social distancing. So when we are going to be coming back uh, to our business, whenever it resumes, I think contactless or maybe the use of technology is going to be paramount. So the venue is going to play a very, very important role. So top of the measure, I would say definitely confidence building measures. Then in terms of the hygiene aspects, I would say that. And then working along with the exhibition organizer in terms of how do we work on social uh, distancing because the various norms which would be uh, uh, asked by the exhibitions organizer and the venue to follow from either from the central government or the state government. So that's, that's going to be one. And technology is something uh, which is going to be very important. This, 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 I would say in that pattern, I would go as far as the venue is concerned. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Bala. And uh, I'd like to move to Mr. Amresh Tiwari as a leading professional conference organizer, as a leading player in the mice industry. What do you feel going forward as a PCO? What would occupy your top of the mind share uh, for organizing successful events or for uh, enabling your uh, clients to, to uh, you know, uh, restore your business, uh, mice business, I would say? Hi. So before I answer your question, so in the mice M I C E, there is one segment that is I, which can never be virtual or hybrid. Let me put it on record. So incentive will be always an experience, a feel good factor to motivate people. So that I, we need to address altogether. This need to be a physical. Having said that, as you said, for the as a PCO or but the conference period, any events which we are going to do in the future, the most important aspect would be the communication. That this is going to be the biggest uh, challenge. Earlier, we are not focusing that much on communication. Now, as a PCO, as an event planner, as a venue, as a customer, your communication with all the stakeholders, be it a participant, exhibitor, agencies, vendors, is going to be changed, it's going to be changed. So communication is going to play a key role to make or break the event. So that is a very important aspect, communication. And second, as my colleague rightly pointed out, Bala, the confidence. You know, confidence of the customer or the visitors to come to the venue, speaker come to the venue, visitors come to the venue, you know, the, are your vendor participating with your event, whole ecosystem which you are going to create the confidence need to be there and that confidence need to be well supported by the standard operating procedure, which is going to be there. And third is, which is going to, you no, know, we all know key next two, three years, we cannot produce 7 billion vaccine to entire, you know, the whole, I think with the population, the 7 billion. So it will take long time. So COVID is going to be stay there. So and lots of time people are talking about the safe distancing, the measurement. So it's not all about that, but I believe personally, it's a comfort. I should have the comfort key even if I reach a venue and if I get contract with the COVID, how hotel or venue is, you know, the ready to handle me. So people are asking about, you know, the, how they are going to prevent that thing. But if something goes wrong, how they are providing this need to be addressed very carefully and that will give the comfort zone. But we are seeing at the international, first booking I get for the New Zealand from India. One of the big corporates say, Amres, can we plan NES event at New Zealand? So the destination has given them, you know, how well they are prepared to handle if things, something goes gone. So lots of this kind of Singapore for that matter, Taiwan, Korea, these are the destination which is coming very hot. In fact, the Vietnam, Cambodia, and lots of corporate, you talk the automobile industry, island gas, power energy, even island gas companies are willing to go to the countries which is not very island gas rich countries. So that shows the confidence barrier. So these, the communication, confidence and comfort, this is my three C's for the future. Very well put. And uh, taking some cues from you, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Sakin Chin, uh, as a destination, what would be uh, your your uh, impetus on uh, to provide the confidence to the the, uh, the travelers the the business visitors or the mice mice uh, industry uh, uh, trade fraternity I think, uh, as i mentioned earlier we will we do take a very phased approach i think uh, we have uh, put in place uh, all the health and safety protocols uh, what we want to do is to continue to refine them, uh, continue to work on a whole of ecosystem uh, basis, right? working with all our industry partners, with, uh, with governments, uh, with uh, hotels, and with venue operators. I think uh, for, for any event to eventually come back uh, successfully, we, as uh, Mr. Balas Subramaniam has said, I think uh, we need to get the confidence back. And to get the confidence back is really about uh, ensuring people can come to Singapore, come to Sentosa with that peace of mind, right? Uh, we have, uh, you know, done things in a very phased approach. We are now in phase two, where we have uh, allowed uh, restaurants dine in, 
we are opening up for staycation. We are, you know, our attractions are open, albeit with a limited capacity. And, uh, and, and tours are starting to, to happen too. So I think if you look at the, the whole uh, tourism industry, it's gradually opening up. And I think that certainly will, will augur well eventually for uh, the MICE groups uh, when they come back. Uh, and I think uh, certainly it will, be, it will allow us to continue to, 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 to build on that, to build on that uh, strength. I think in summary, I would like to say that uh, we are open for business uh, cautiously. You know, we, we want to uh, start to build that confidence. And uh, I think uh, we will continue to build on the processes that we have put in place to ensure that we can open up even more over the course of the, the next few months. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we, have, we have learned to adapt. We have learned to uh, kind of operationalize uh, new measures. So we, we think we have a good foundation for safe resumption of, uh, of MICE events. And uh, we would uh, certainly like to welcome our friends and uh, you know, fans from India back to uh, Sentosa and, and Singapore. Definitely, and uh, I'm sure that under your leadership, uh, uh, the, the, the fraternity and the, the visitors are in safe hands. Uh, I'd like to pick up some cues from you and go, go to Mr. Rod. And uh, you mentioned about confidence, uh, Mr. Sakin. So uh, Rod, can you, can you share with us in this quick fire answer, can you share with us the most important things to build confidence uh, back, uh, the win, to win the confidence back in our clients? Main things. What are the strongest elements um, helping destinations in uh, confidence is what's happening at the national level. So there was that example of New Zealand. And uh, because of uh, the um, uh, approach of the New Zealand government in being able to suppress um, uh, the virus, the venues there are going to benefit from this opportunity that's been given to them. So a lot of it is going to come around how it's playing out at that national level. Beyond that, there's a, there's a lot of um, accreditation, uh, either at a government or regulatory level or industry led by UFI, or in the case of Singapore, you know, by, by STB and so on. So I think it becomes very important for uh, destinations and venues to collaborate firstly, in being able to communicate that message and also being able to find which are the appropriate uh, accreditations or messaging uh, that they uh, want to use because uh, a lot of venues are using uh, local uh, government uh, mandated uh, accreditations or tick whatever their program is and the reality is when we're in an international mice market uh, often your customer in another country is not really familiar with that. So it becomes very important to go beyond that headline accreditation and uh, do a combination of either being able to um, uh, get yourself ticked with some more universally recognized accreditation uh, or ensure that uh, you're able to present that local uh, uh, safety seal uh, in a much more compelling way. So I think we've earlier talked about the importance of communication. So in this aspect, again, communication is going to be very, very important. And uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Berislav, what are the three things he feels uh, would be the key element, key trends driving the industry and its growth in the future? How will our industry thrive in the future, keeping those three things in mind? Um, you mean uh, the three things I can recommend or, or yes. these three things we... We what you can recommend? Uh, so uh, definitely, so Croatia is a touristic country and 20% uh, uh, of our GDP is uh, related to tourism. And maybe I can share this experience from this season. So actually Croatia uh, had um, something like 60-70% uh, of the um, results expected uh, for this season, which was uh, 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 pronounced very good because the expectations in spring were that maybe that will be just uh, 30 percent. And definitely, I believe that uh, we can uh, uh, get a lot uh, insight from the tourism as well, uh, because at the end of the day, like the other 
uh, panelists said, so we are part of the uh, meetings and uh, uh, tourism industry as well. Um, so definitely what I see, so uh, I think it's uh, the, the key element for the industry for the succeed is the content. So I believe that uh, we are able to provide the right content for our customers because they need the content actually. Um, uh, they need uh, to be uh, sure that they will have the opportunity to interact with the buyers, sellers, with the people from the industry, that they will find the answers they expect to get in the market, to present their products, to see what is innovative, what is new, to, to have this interaction and to keep on uh, developing the results of their uh, uh, companies and their businesses. So I think that this is the key element. The second, what we are already discussed, is uh, some sort of trust, uh, so that people, if they decide to come uh, or to travel or to visit or to participate in any kind of event, uh, event they should uh, have certain uh, safety and trust that all the measures will be uh, so uh, highly uh, prepared, that they will be safe in this environment. And I believe that this is the task uh, definitely event industry can fulfill. I'd like to ask Mr. Vivek Shukla, I'd like to ask him a different question. Uh, what is the best thing to do with your staff right now? So I think, you know, this is uh, the wonderful time for us to invest a lot of try, uh, time, you know, in terms of their professional uh, training, and uh, their professional development. So that we have been doing and uh, this becomes an important part as I mentioned because with the physical exhibitions around, you know, and uh, the ongoing virtual events which will continue at least uh, in a hybrid model along with the physical exhibition. Seeing that it's very, very essential uh, to train each and every member and especially having the new uh, technical skill set team members adding up in, in your team as uh, uh, Rod Kamleshwaran also mentioned. So this is uh, this is going to be a new normal, a mandatory kind of uh, requirement for every organization. But if you can allow Mr. Raghav, I just want to just put one more point beside this, beside your question, if you can allow me. Sure, sure. Okay. So I think, you know, the greatest apprehension now, what we see or any organizer would be seeing now after opening up the venues and the exhibition, the challenge would be again, gaining the confidence of the exhibitor and the visitor, because these are the two elements which makes the event successful. Now the exhibitor, which is going to, which participates in your exhibitions regularly uh, uh, by putting in a lot of money, investing a lot of money, expecting a, at least a minimum return. Now there will be a challenge which we have to work on after, you know, working on the SOPs and opening of venues and exhibition, how to sustain your you know, long glorious exhibitions to keep on, you know, maintaining the success model of your exhibition. So here, I think, uh, unless and until the exhibitors are not going to get that level of confidence, they might not book up the big uh, venue or the big uh, pavilions for themselves. So even the size of the exhibitions might come down. So I think here at this point of time, the virtual element will complement at least in terms of visitors registration, getting some true analytics, how, the, how well the exhibit. And uh, with this, I'd like to invite Ms. Sonia Parasha to give a formal uh, closing to this session with her concluding remarks. And we'd like to invite her on the dais, please. Over to you, Ms. Parasha. Thank you, Raghav. Uh, thank you, all of fellow panelists. Uh, last comment to sum up the session today, I would say there have been ma major lasting changes in the minds of our customers, which means people the businesses and the government. And how are we going to uh, tackle this? There are only two key things. The learning curve, the learning curve out of this pandemic. And second is product innovation. So these are the two key uh, learnings from today's session as well that uh, we have to restore. Now, my definition of restore is R is revival. Uh, reviving the industry back. E is empower. So we are going to empower our staff, our employees, our fellows, peers uh, by skilling. Uh, and then S is strategy. So we have to have a new strategy in place. C is treatment. How are we going to treat this crisis? O is opportunity. Uh, I would like to treat this crisis as an opportunity. R is retrofit, which I get from Rod. 
definitely every business model will have to retrofit itself. And E is my favorite word, exhibitions. Uh, so my definition from today's uh, or conclusion from today's panel is restore. So thank you, Exhibition Showcase. Thank you, fellow panelists. So thank you so much for joining us.